All right, so uh, last time we looked at how to add a loop into our project. Um, now we are going to look at adding randomness to create some more variation in the drawing. Um, one thing I want to point out is that after you do the loops lesson, you may want to kind of review uh, how loops work. So there's a link here to a Code Academy tutorial. Um, again, the first part of this tutorial is free. Uh, so, you know, there's it's an interactive uh, tutorial where it'll ask you to write um, different uh, code and then it'll tell you if you got it right. And so this kind of does, it, it, you know, just regular JavaScript in a different context than how we do it. Um, so you can try out these lessons and kind of reinforce the stuff that we're talking about in class. Um, so let's go back to the notes. So today I'm going to talk about randomness. Um, I'm going to add some randomness into my drawing. Um, and that'll kind of be it for this week eight lesson. That should be enough to get you started on the assignment eight, um, creating a variation. So I'll talk about that a little bit at the end of the video. So to get started, I want to have my project open. So I'm going to open up GitHub as usual and make sure I'm up to date. And then I can uh, open up in Sublime. So here's my loop project from last time. And I'm also going to click show in the finder. So I'm going to create a new example based on the loop example that I did last time. Um, so I'm just going to duplicate that folder and then add some new code into it. So I'm going to hit command D on there and change this to, um, well, I guess I should name this after the assignment. So this is going to be pattern underscore one. And so this will be our first pattern assignment. Um, we're going to use a loop and then we're going to add some variation. And I'll show a couple different things that you can do with this. Uh, so you don't have to do all of them, you just have to choose one that's most interesting to you. Um, so let's go back to Sublime. Um, I'm going to open up index.html for my uh, landing page. And I have my link to the loop example down here. I'm just going to add a new line here and add another link. And so this one goes to random. Uh, and this is our pattern version one. Uh, and then I'll just close the anchor tag, close the list item. So then I want to make sure that Sublime server is running. So I'm going to click sub start Sublime server. Um, and then I'll go to the browser and open up the Sublime server. So that's at localhost 8080. And I'll click on MMP210. And here's pattern version one. Um, oh, whoops, I put the wrong reference here. It's pattern underscore one. Sorry, I'm kind of thinking about randomness too much. So pattern underscore one. So let's go back to the home page and refresh that and pattern version one. Okay, so there's a pattern we created before. Now we're going to make it a little more interesting. We're going to add some randomness to it. Um, so I'm going to go back to Sublime and close this out. And I'm going to go to pattern one. I'm going to open up index.html first and just make sure this all matches. So I'm going to say pattern version one for the title and same for the H1. And then I'll just do a couple different types of patterns you could do. Um, we'll do some randomness and then we'll try different, some different stuff. So um, I'm going to take out my variables for now just to kind of simplify things. Um, I think that looks right. So just going back to our regular pattern without the, the simple variations that we added last time. So Basically, the idea behind randomness is since we're using a loop, we can't, we don't have like, you know, this ellipse five different times. So I can't just like change the number of this. If I change this number here, it updates all of our ellipses. So if we want to introduce variation, there's some different ways we can do it. But an easy way to do it is using randomness. Um, so let's take a look at randomness and then we'll add it to our code. Uh, so random is just a mathematical uh, concept um, where basically uh, what we're doing in our code is actually not pure randomness. It's more like um, 
it's more accurate to say it's arbitrary because we are going to set limits to the randomness. But what random does is it basically takes a range of numbers and it gives us a random number in between those range. So uh, this comes from the math object in JavaScript. Um, if you open up the console and you type in math, you can see that there's a bunch of different stuff that JavaScript has in there for doing different mathematical uh, equations and formulas and stuff like that. Um, and one of those things is math.random. And that just gives us a random number. Uh, for math.random, it's somewhere between 0 and 1. Um, but P5 has some functions that we can use to convert that into a more use useful number. Um, so let's see how we can add that in our code. So in P5, they have a random function. Uh, in the documentation, we can see this. So if I go to p5.js and go to reference and go to math, um, there's a random function somewhere in here. Oh, actually, I guess, yeah, it's a little bit down here. So there's random. And basically, random, you can have uh, either one argument, and it'll be between 0 and that number. Um, so th that's a, a random with one argument. And then you can also have two arguments, so you can set the minimum and the maximum value. So we'll see version, uh, we'll see examples of both of that. Um, so if I go into my console and I just say random five, um, it's going to give me a random number between uh, zero and five. Um, and one of the things that's kind of tricky about random is it really is random. So sometimes you'll see stuff like this where you get zero twice. Um, it's not going to say like, oh, if it was five last time, then it can't be five this time. Sometimes what you get in randomness is streaks. Um, and you may have heard of that, you know, in different contexts, like in basketball, they have, um, the hot hand, which is like, if you make five shots in a row, you think you're going to keep making shots. Um, but you're probably not going to, because, you know, most people can only make a certain percentage of their shots. Um, so in randomness, sometimes... Uh, you know, we expect randomness to be more predictable than it is, but it really is very random. Um, we're not going to see that so much because we don't have that many different sort of characters on our, in our scene. Uh, but just to kind of talk about, you know, randomness is truly random. It's not predictable. We can also generate random numbers in a specific range. So if I say random between 5 and 10, it'll make a random number, but it will not be lower than 5 and it'll not be greater than 10. So we can see the result of that uh, value is always somewhere between 5 and 10. We can also do negative numbers. So if I say random between negative 5 and 5, sometimes it'll be random, sometimes it'll be, uh, or sorry, sometimes it'll be negative, sometimes it'll be positive, but it's always going to be greater than negative 5, the minimum, and lower than 5, the maximum. We can use randomness for with anything that we might use a number for. So all of the things that we've done with animation or interaction, we can also do with randomness. So let's start with color. Uh, right now we're just using like uh, names for color, but we could also use uh, numbers. So if I change the fill here, um, let's say I have, uh, let's say let r equal zero, let b equal, or sorry, g equal 100, and let b equal zero. So you can guess what that color will be. We have the R value, G value, and the B value. So since we have zero R and zero B uh, and 100 uh, green, when we do that fill, you can probably guess that we're going to get a green color. So now all of our guys are green. I'm going to remove this up here so we don't really need that anymore. Oh, and I forgot to actually update this. So let's change this to pattern version one. Okay, so in this case, R, G, and B are always the same, so we don't see any variation here. But remember, our for loop is happening over and over and over again. So we can change something, like let's say I put random here, and I put 100. Now we're going to get a random amount of green. Um, and you can see it's kind of flickering. We have this kind of like weird animation thing happening. Um, so there's a couple ways that we can deal with that uh, for this assignment. One is you might, you know, change the frame rate so it's not going as fast. So I could change frame rate um, to 
five when you're testing. Okay, you could also just take out um, the draw function. So uh, one thing that you could do is just remove this altogether. So you just have a setup function. So you just see one variation each time. And then another thing that we can do, uh, which actually will be more useful for testing, is I can actually change the name of the draw function. So I'm going to change this draw to pattern. And then I'm just going to call the pattern function from setup. Um, we really haven't talked much about functions, uh, but this is something that we can do. Um, so basically now, every time I refresh the page, we get a different version of this pattern. Um, and then I can also add in a mouse pressed or mouse uh, clicked, uh, we can do pressed function here, and then also call pattern here. Um, so we'll talk about functions in a lot more depth in the next unit. Uh, but for now, just know that whenever I do this pattern here, it's going to call this function pattern, which is um, basically taking place of our draw function. And by saying mouse press, then we get a pattern here. Now, every time I click the mouse, we get a different pattern. Okay, so we can kind of control that crazy animation. Um, so now we've got our pattern. If I click, we get a new pattern. There's not a lot of variation happening here, right? It's just a little bit different green each time. So let's add some more randomness. Let's say we want a lot of green. I can say it's 255. Now we'll see a lot higher green values, but we also still get lower dark green values. So if I want all of them to have a certain amount of green, I can raise the minimum number. So if I put 100 as the first value, then there's always going to be at least 100 green and up to 255. Okay, so now there's none of that darker green anymore. It's always kind of a bit brighter. Um, I can also lower this if I don't want those like really neon green colors. Okay, so now we have a range of green. Um, and so we can continue to add to our color palette uh, by adding red and blue. So let's add some blue first. Let's say we want some random blue random 100. Okay, so now we get some nice blue-green colors. If we want a little bit more blue, maybe we could add up to 150. Okay, so we get some nice blues. Uh, and then we can add some reds as well. So we can say random 100 on the red. Okay, so you don't see a lot of reds because there's always going to be less red than there are green and blue. So when you're using randomness, Although some values are random, we can control for the amount of randomness we see. Um, so we do get this kind of like range of colors between this sort of darker blue and this sort of lighter green. Uh, if I just did completely random on all of these, so that would be just like random 255. I'm just going to leave these here with comments. So if I just did random 255 for each one, then there would be no real color palette happening because it would just be completely random colors. And that's fine, you might like that look, but if you want to control the design a bit more, then you can use these random ranges uh, and limited amounts of random in order to uh, get a specific color palette. So you could play around with that for a bit. You could pause the video and say, what if I want more reds or what if I want more oranges? How would I mix my colors that way? Um, so that's randomizing color. Uh, we can also randomize size. So let's randomize the size of the face. So I'll say let uh, S for size. And let's say we'll set a range. Like the, the smallest face we want is 40 pixels. The largest face we want is, let's say, 120 pixels. Um, so then this will set one size, and then we can kind of apply that. So let's start with the face. So I'll put S for size into this, uh, to the ellipse size value. Oops. So we're not changing the eyes yet, but you can see we're getting different sizes for each one of our faces. So let's add in the size there. So again, we kind of need to use variables here. We could have like completely random sized eyes, completely random sized um, mouth, but we probably want to have it relative to this size here. So maybe for uh, the I, I could say, you know, size divided by four, size divided by four. Okay, so now the eyes are changing with the face. But I could also add even a little bit more randomness to that. So I could just say plus random, you know, 10. 
or actually 10 is probably too big, let's say five. So then now one of the eyes kind of changes from, uh, from character to character. So I can add randomness in a lot of different places. I could also, you know, make this random. So some of the, um, the eyes will be, you know, less, more or less close together. So that's another place I can use randomness. Basically, anytime I have a number, I can have some randomness. Um, so let's see, I can also change the size here. This is size over two for the mouth. And size over uh, four. Oh, actually it's size over eight. And size over 16. Okay, so we're getting a bit more randomness here. Our characters are kind of all squished into the same area. So if we if we added some uh, randomness to the height or the Y position, that could be useful. So let's make a random value for Y. And this one I can just kind of go crazy. I'll say Y, and I don't want them to be completely off the top. So I'll set this relative to size. So one thing I want to be careful, let's say I had a character that was like, you know, this guy. If I set his Y value to zero, remember the Y is in the middle of the circle, so then he would be partly off the screen. Maybe that's something you want, but to avoid that, we can use half the size as our minimum value for Y and uh, height minus half the size for our maximum value for Y. So for Y, I would say random uh, size over two as the minimum value and height minus size over two as the maximum value. And then I have to actually use Y. So if I put Y right here, then we'll see the, uh, the faces are moving up and down, but our mouth and eyes are in the same place. So let's fix that. So for the eyes, um, we use Y and Y. Oh, and I guess it's like probably Y minus 10, something like that. Okay, and then here we have like y plus 20. Okay, so now we have a lot of variation in these different characters. Um, so that's one way to go. You could use your self-portrait or some element of your self-portrait to create a pattern. Um, well, actually, let me wait a second before I talk about the assignment. Okay, so this in this case, I'm you know kind of combining all of them. Um, so let's go back to the class notes for a minute and talk about the assignment. So for the assignment, I want you to just make a simple pattern, okay, looping across the page, or if you wanna you know, try going down the page or you know, something else instead, you could give that a try, that might be fun. Um, but for now, I just want you to use a loop similar to the one we have here and use some random functions so we get some random variation. So I did these kind of different characters. You could also do some like little patterns. So you know, if you wanted to make something like uh, let me see if I can come up with a quick pattern to put behind this guy. Self-portrait here. So again, you don't have to do both of these. You can do one or the other, but something you might want to do instead of a self-portrait is like kind of a pattern. Um, so I'll like remove these for a second. So an abstract pattern, you could just use shapes. So maybe I would do like a line from like X and uh, zero to X uh, plus, I'll use 100 again here. And height. So then you get a line going down the page each time. Let's do a stroke of, I guess we can use the same RGB here. So we'll have some randomness. And then we'll do a stroke weight of like two. Okay, so, you know, we're just a little pattern. Uh, maybe we'll make that a bit bigger. So it's pretty simple, but you could start to see how you might make some cool stuff with that. I could take another line here and reverse the X. So I could say X plus 100 is the starting point and X is the ending point. So we get a little, you know, X. And then you could start to think about like, well, what else would be interesting? Maybe I'll put an ellipse where they intersect. So can I figure out where they intersect? Well, it looks like they're probably in the middle. 
So maybe I could put an ellipse at x and um, 180 is height over 2 and uh, make it like 10 pixels. Okay, so now I've got a little circle. Actually, I didn't really get the intersection because it's, it's moved over a bit. So let's say it's probably x plus 50. Okay, so now I have like a little circle. I could increase this. It's a little bigger. I don't want to fill though, so I'll say no fill for this one. Okay, so that's kind of cool. So I could start to play with different variations of a pattern, um, and then I could start to move stuff around. So I could say like maybe this Y is actually random between like 160 and 200 or something like that. So then I get to have some like subtle variations in my pattern. So there has to be some variation, but you could use like abstract shapes and stuff like that um, if you're more interested in that type of thing than the sort of like characters that we're doing down here. Um, another thing that you could do is like try to make windows. So like windows in a building, because those usually repeat, but then you could have some variation. Um, so you can also come up with different ideas if you have other thoughts of things that you would want to do. Um, if you have something that's like a little bit uh, you know, unusual, as long as you're using the for loop and the randomness, you know, that is perfectly fine for the, uh, for this assignment. Um, so yeah, that's basically it for random. Um, if you have any other questions, let me know. I'm going to put these little self portrait guys back in here just so we see both of these examples. So we have the pattern in the background and then our self portrait in the foreground. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. Um, if you have any questions or thoughts about the assignment, uh, please put them on the Blackboard forum. Uh, and if you have any questions or you need help with anything technical, uh, let me know and I can uh, maybe take a look either on Zoom or just over email. Um, and just to cover GitHub once again, kind of repetitive, but you know, just to make sure we're, we always do this. So I need to add... Um, the pattern to the GitHub and commit to master and then push origin. Uh, and then I'll add a link to this code, which you can see right here. Um, and of course, if you are going to turn in your assignment, you need to use, um, you know, you would do your username.github.io slash mmp210. And if you have a link here, um, oh, I haven't, it's probably, it just hasn't updated yet. So yeah, then you would just take that as, you know, the link. Uh, 